96.7 FM WTOB. You're listening to The Wealth Guardians with Doug Ray, helping you retire the job and keep the paycheck. I'm your host, Doug Ray, and with me is Bryce Payne. I think we've got a pretty good lineup for you today. The first segment, we're going to be talking about if you have to guess at questions for retirement, could that get you in trouble? And then the second segment, stay around for that because we're going to be talking about what does it take to make a financial advisor and what does all that alphabet suit behind their name does it mean anything? Good morning, Bryce. How you doing? Oh, I'm chipper this morning, Doug. How are you? Chipper. I'm chipper. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice weekend out, and uh, our deck is almost done. You know, we've been working on this deck for uh, three months now. And, Two years, hasn't it been? Well, that's when we first envisioned it, but uh, they've actually been uh, – the demolish of the old deck started uh, a couple of months ago, and we're now rounding out the last couple of weeks just in time for uh, the real barbecue weather out there. So we're – the wife and I are happy. Happy wife, happy deck, happy life. Yeah, well, it's been a while since my wife's come up with a project, so I'm sure one's right around the corner for me. There you me. go. All right. Time to get fit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it All is. Right. Doug, let's give a shout out to our men and women in uniform out there, the uh, Wealth Guardian salute there. Uh, you're out there listening. You've put on that uniform. You're a first responder. You're always in our thoughts here at uh, Wealth Guardians, and we thank you. We thank your families for everything that you do for us. Doug, thank you for your service, and uh, we've got your son Garrett coming on board with the Wealth Guardians now. He served as well, so Garrett, you're out there listening. Thank you for your service as well, and uh, we appreciate you. So let's go ahead and get started here, Doug. What are we talking about? We're talking about guessing at retirement and the most important questions and what could go wrong. What could possibly go wrong, Doug, with taking a stab at retirement as opposed to actually planning? Well, number one, it never ceases to amaze me how how many people out in the workforce, they're working one day and they're retired the next and they just magically they're there. They did it without a plan. No planning they whatsoever. Just tur- they just turned in their resignation uh, and the next day they're sleeping in. You know, I'd have to say that is more folks do it that way than come our way. Now we see people, planners, come our way. You know, they want a plan right. put in front of them. Engineers. Well, numbers people. You know, most people. And, and, you know, one of the most important questions is how much monthly income are you going to need? <laughs> you just want to guess at that? No, you don't, uh, obviously. And I would say when we meet, when we sit down with uh, people who are coming in to meet with us and uh, we're going through that first meeting where we're asking all the questions that we need to to understand all the moving parts of their uh, of their finances. And w- sometimes we have to assign homework to somebody because they didn't, they didn't come with everything. And one of those things most often that we have to assign homework to is when we get to the question, how much income or how much money do you think you will need on a monthly basis to pay the bills, to uh, put food in the fridge, put gas in the car, and to live the kind of retirement that you want to do? And a lot of the times, maybe, maybe half the time, we get the deer in the headlights look. Yeah. with that question and people simply have not added it together or they don't know what kind of finances might change in retirement they know what they're spending now maybe but yeah you know i don't know how that's going to change am i going to spend more on gas less in gas am i going to be shopping more going to go out to eat more they don't know they haven't discussed it they haven't sat down and had a fi- uh, family conversation about that and that's enormously important yeah you know people hate keeping a budget they just hate it yeah i don't like it either but you know something we ask folks to bring in a lot of data points tax returns financial statements iras life insurance long-term care whatever they've got but i'm telling you that monthly spend is the most important number you're bringing to us absolutely because the entire plan revolves around that you could have you could have two people with the exact same finances the only thing different is one spends three thousand dollars a month and the other spends five thousand dollars a month and that is going to be a huge difference on what their nest egg looks like or what their income needs are going to be uh, looking like 20 years from now. Doug, you, you made a nice, uh, a nice uh, statement there that nobody likes to do it. You hate to do it, but you have to do it. You know what? Uh, being f- financially healthy is like being physically healthy. I hate eating spinach. I really do. <laughs> but I do it. 
because I know my body needs certain nutrients. And uh, there's no getting around that. You just can't go through life having uh, nacho cheese Doritos every night, which I would love to do, but can't do it. Uh, let's go on to the next one. Uh, right. How much will you need for major purchases? This is something that I think a lot of people overlook is if, if they have come to us with a budget, one of the things that I think they overlook is, hey, your car is going to need new tires every couple of years. That water heater or that uh, AC unit or the roof is going to need repairs at some point in your life. Have you added that cost in to your budget? If you added everything else in, did you think of those one time, those unforeseen things that really are foreseen? And I'll tell you what, the last five years, I've had to replace all three of those. I, I, and that was not fun. Let I me have, tell you. I have too. Uh, we had a horror story where we don't go into our garage every day. And uh, I had noticed some water coming down. I thought, out of the garage and i thought oh well that's just because of all the snow melt and two days later i went down i was like there's still water coming around the garage door and i opened up the garage door and it was all steamy in there and the water heater had been leaking for uh about four days and i hadn't realized it you know the trade-off for me is and and this is one of the lists down here big purchase as a daughter getting married uh -huh. i had two boys so i'm not worried about that you're not one. worried about that i've got a daughter so that uh, that might be something i need to plan for some distant aspen distant years in the future there i might need to plan uh, well, for that well you never know and we were working with clients just last week that got three daughters they got to plan for yeah yeah so yeah you got to plan for these major purchases cars don't last forever they do not you know? last forever there's going to be you know health care is a kind of a major purchase as well but i think we'll get into that one here in just a minute the next one we want to talk about is how much impact will inflation have now everybody recognizes that things cost more than they used to but most people don't realize just how much prices increase over time and i did a little bit of math here before we got started on the radio show when we do have people come in and they have created a, a budget for themselves or maybe they've even created some spreadsheet trying to do a, a full financial plan like we have the software for one of the things that they often overlook is inflation. Mm -hmm. Well, we use the 100-year average, which right now is 3.2%. And I want to do some quick math in preparation for this particular bullet point right here. So I want you out there to think about this. If you're spending $4,000 a month in retirement now, do you have any idea if you're using 3.2% inflation rate, 100-year average, what that 4000 becomes 10 years from now? It becomes, Doug, you want to take a guess? Uh, a lot more. A lot more, plus some. 5,700, 10 years from now. In 20 years, 7,800. So 4,000 in 20 years has now gone up to 7,800. What about 30 years? Some people have a retirement of 30 years out there. My mom is approaching that. 10,700. So in 30 years, 4,000 moves to 10,700. You can't just be planning on spending $4,000 a month because 4,000 ain't going to get you diddly in 30 years from now. Yeah, people see that in our third meeting and our process, and it really, their, their eyes bulge. They, they do, and that. they say, is that really accurate? Is that, because they'll tell us $4,000 a month, and then we'll be running through the years, and they say, wait a minute, what's that 7500 there? Well, that's your spending. Well, I told you 4000 Yes, you did, but you told us 4000 in the year 2022. This software wouldn't be worth a hill of beans if we didn't uh, adjust for inflation. Oh, yeah, now they get it. Now they start to see the all the gears in there that are working in our software that they hadn't planned for. Speaking of all the gears working, Doug, one of the things that you really do have to plan for is taxes. Mm -hmm. And we've got a workshop coming up, taxes and retirement. Last chance. Last chance. Now we already just had one last week, but we've got we still got our Tuesday coming up on the 22nd. And that is at 6.30 p.m. It's in the Broyhill in Clemens. So if you're in the neighborhood, uh, you do have to register with us. And so the easiest way for you to register is give Joy or Lynn a call at 336-391-3409. There's still a few spots left. 336-391-3409. You can also visit us at our website, thewealthguardians.com. And Doug, what tab do they hit there? The events tab, right? It's the events tab. The yep. events tab. So either give us a call or register online. We would love to see you there. But that is something that you also have to take into deep concern. And it wasn't mentioned here, Doug, when talking about how much money will you need. Planning for taxes. We always ask the question for a show of hands, who thinks taxes are going to go up in the future? What would you say the percentage of hands are? 100%. 100%, maybe 101, 100%, yeah. maybe 102%. Uh, everyone believes that taxes are going to go up. So you want to take that into consideration as well. If you're in the 12% tax bracket now, maybe you shouldn't be planning on always being in that 12% tax bracket. There's other things that you can plan for. Obviously, 
you have to pay Uncle Sam something. But if you have a good financial planner in your corner, maybe a good CPA in your corner, there are ways to pay Uncle Sam only what you're required to and not a penny more. That's what you want to have somebody help you with that. So uh, again, 336-391-3409. That's our Taxes and Retirement Seminar, Tuesday, March 22nd at 6.30 p.m. Doug, uh, let's talk real quick about our last one here, healthcare costs. Now, the rate of inflation on healthcare costs is more than the average rate of inflation. So that's, that's topping out right now at around 7%. So I'm going to ask the same question here. Let's say that in 2022, you're spending $10,000 a year on healthcare costs. Maybe you're already retired, and so you, you, you've got to cover some more of the premium yourself. 7%, you know what 10000 becomes 20 years from now? Mm, a lot more. 16800 Yeah. So again, our software helps people uh, figure that out. Well, it, it's time for us to move into the break. And of course, when we do that, it's time for our trivia question. It's time for the Wealth Guardian's trivia question of the week. And here we go. Let's see if we can stump Doug this week. Doug, happy belated St. Patrick's Day. Okay. St. Patrick was born on this day in 460 and is the patron saint of Ireland, though he was born in Britain. Here's the question for you. Why are green shamrocks the symbol of St. Patrick's Day? I'll be specific. Why are green three-leaf shamrocks the symbol of St. Patrick's Day? By the way, listeners, he never gives me these questions ahead of time, so I don't know what's coming at me from one week to the next. Now, it could be music, it could be finances, it could be history, it could be uh, the patron saints of Ireland. We never know. Stick around through the break. We will be back. This is Bryce Payne. With me is Doug Ray. The show is The Wealth Guardians, helping you retire the job and keep the paycheck. And this is 96.7 FM WTOB. 96.7 96.7 FM WTOB. You're listening to the Wealth Guardians with Doug Ray, helping you retire the job and keep the paycheck. I'm Bryce Payne along with Doug Ray. And this segment, we are talking about understanding financial jargon, advisor designations, and definitions. What do all those letters at the end of somebody's name mean? Doug and I are going to go over that for you to help you speak a new language. But before we come back to the trivia question here, I've got a question for you. If you are five to seven years from retirement and you want to confirm that you're making the best decision for retirement, do you think we've got good news for you? Well, you know we do. We offer a no cost, no obligation second review so you can see how we help you retire the job yet keep the paycheck. But as always, the ball's in your court. You got to pick up the phone and call us, and that's easier than you think to do. All you have to do is pick it up and dial 336 391. 3409. That's 336-391-3409. Doug and I would welcome the opportunity to sit down with you and help you plan for your retirement and make sure that you're not making any mistakes. And again, learning how to retire the job and keep the paycheck. You can also visit us at our website, thewealthguardians.com. Now it's time to see if we stumped Doug with this week's trivia question. Hmm. It's time to get Doug's best guess for the Wealth Guardian's Trivia Question of the Week. Doug, happy belated St. Patrick's Day. Garrett, happy belated St. Patrick's Day to you, too. He's in the studio here watching us. St. Patrick was born on this day in 460 and is the patron saint of Ireland, though he was born in Britain. Question to Doug is, and question to you out there is, why are three-leaf green shamrocks the symbol of St. Patrick's Day? There's a reason for that. Doug, any idea? Well, I just remember as a kid um, in the springtime searching frantically. Yep, for the four leaf. For the four leaf clover. I don't know why it's not a four leaf clover instead of a three leaf. There is a reason. Well, I don't know that reason. Why don't you enlighten me? <laughs> okay. Well, um, yeah, I remember that too. And by the way, as I was doing the research for this, you have a one in 10,000 chance of finding a four leaf clover, which is about how many times that I've looked through a clover patch and never found one. My grandfather was very good at finding those. Well, I'm going to give you a little bit of a clue here. So what religion has saints? Well, the, the Catholic Protestant. There you go, the Catholic religion. Yeah. And what is kind of unique about the Catholic religion when it comes to three? Well, you've got the Holy Ghost, the Father, and the Son. The Trinity. Yeah. There you go. We're going to give Doug... He needed a little coaxing there, but that is exactly why. Well, I didn't think it was that easy. 
Well, I'm sorry. Sometimes I got to throw you a softball. It's not my fault. You couldn't get the softball. I'll throw you a fastball next time. Yes, the uh, the shamrocks, the three leaf shamrocks are are that because of it was uh, St. Patrick's way of demonstrating the Holy Trinity to potential converts. Mm-hmm. And so they keep that uh, going. And I think Garrett actually had, though. Garrett, did you Google that? No, he knew it. Garrett knew the answer. So uh, very good. So we'll give that an extra bell. For Garrett. He didn't he didn't need help. He didn't need coaxing like Doug did. All right, Doug, we are talking about now he Googled going it. into the yeah, you think he did. Yeah. But Garrett says I he know didn't. he did. Okay. Well, you know him better than I do. I'll take him at his word, at least for now. All right, so we're gonna start going in here under all those letters that you see, whether it's in a uh, somebody you're sitting down with financially or, or who you're sitting down with your uh, your CPA. There's a lot of letters after professional names sometimes, and there's no shortage of those letters in our specific field, financial planning advisors. Uh, it does seem like anyone can call themselves a financial advisor these days. So the question is, how can you sort through the different levels of qualifications in the industry? On this episode, we're going to try to explain some of the most common designations you're going to encounter on your financial planning journey, including the ones that we have here at the Wealth Guardians. I'll start off with the first one. Uh, This is a tough one. You'll see some folks listed as an IAR, Investment Advisor Representative, while others promote themselves being as an RIA, a Registered Investment Advisor. There is a difference to that, and I was thinking before the show, how on earth am I going to easily explain to somebody out there the difference between an RIA and an IAR? I am an IAR. I work through an RIA, which is Alpha Star Capital Management. There are any advisor that you sit down with who has a series license, and we'll talk about those in a minute, who is uh, licensed with FINRA. They have to be at least an IAR. Now, an investment advisor representative. They are a representative of the investment of the, of the registered investment advisory firm. But some advisors choose to take on that bigger role of the RIA, the registered investment advisory firm, themselves. Um, I have worked with an advisor who did that, and that's a lot of extra work. I myself like the idea of working through a third-party agency who's that registered investment advisory firm, and I just be an IAR by myself. That is the easiest way I can explain it. Doug, did that make any sense to you? Well, it did. Now, let's take another way to get into this business, and that's through the broker-dealer network. Okay. And you get a registered rep designation, which is a Series 7. Yes, which I used to have. That's what I got when I first got into the industry, and then I got my 65 later, which is the IAR. Let's go back a little further than that. What does it take to qualify a person to even come into this business? Not much. Do you have to have a college education? You do not. It is not a legal requirement. Do you have to have a high school education? I don't believe you do. I don't believe you do either. No. Now you you tell me, we were sitting down, we were doing (laughs) our show notes, and you told me that it takes longer to qualify as a masseuse than it does to get a Series 65 which is your uh, investment advisor advisor representative designation, which allows you to operate for a fee. That is correct. It it takes longer to get, from my understanding, it takes longer. I don't have my masseuse license, uh, though my wife might say that uh, I should. Um, (laughs) I don't have that, but I would say that it does, I I know that it does, take longer for you to qualify to get your certificates to be a licensed masseuse than it does to be a licensed, uh, a FINRA licensed advisor like your Series 6 or Series 7, one of those licenses. So uh, that that's just a little eye opening right there. Fact it it is, and, and that is the basic all you need to operate in this business. There's a lot more that comes after it. That is true. I'll never forget early on in my career, one of my mentors was the late great Danny Fontana. Unfortunately, he has passed on, but Danny was a very very good broker, and he did not have a college education. But he was a student of the craft. Okay. He studied all the time. And if it weren't for Danny, I probably wouldn't have gotten into radio. Oh, really? Danny was one of the first advisors I've ever seen get on radio. He was on the afternoon on WBT down in Charlotte, and he was a huge success. Danny had a magnetic magnetic personality, a, uh, a humor like no other, and uh, just a really overall great guy, but no 
college education. He got his Series 7, which allowed him to operate in this industry. Then he got his uh, Series 65. Okay. okay. So, folks, breaking it down simple. A Series 7 allows you to operate underneath a broker-dealer like a Merrill Lynch or Edward Jones. It allows you to sell commission-based products, mutual funds, that kind of thing, stocks and bonds if you're sold on a commission. The Series 65 allows you to operate as a fiduciary and as a fee-only advisor, no commissions involved. So I know it gets a little bit murky there. Yes. Now, carrying it further... Okay. The alphabet soup behind our name. That indicates that we've gone further into the study and the mastership of our craft. Than just the legal requirements. Yes. Now, to complicate matters more, there are certain designations that mean more than yes. others, that yes. require a whole lot more work than others. In fact, I can remember probably it's been 20 years ago uh, the government really cracked down on using these designations and right. letters after your name because some of them, you could have gone to a weekend course at a hotel and gotten a letter behind your name. Right. There was no academic rigor whatsoever in, in those courses. So let's talk about a couple of them. Okay. Two of the most famous is the CFP and the CHFC. Bryce, do you know the difference? Uh, the Certified Financial Planner and the Chartered uh, Financial Consultant. Uh, I don't know that I could easily explain the difference between those Essentially two. none. Okay. Uh, the CFP designation is probably the most well-known. Right. But both require a lot of academic rigor. Uh, the CHFC, which is what I have, mm -hmm. requires 10 college-level courses in all phases of study in finance and investment planning and retirement planning and even business planning. So that's about two and a half years? Yeah. Okay. CFP is the same. The biggest difference between the two is you have to obviously pass a test to pass each course. Then the CFP designation has a cumulative uh, test at the uh, end, uh, and the CHFC does not. Okay. okay. I can tell you which of those two I would prefer. All right. Now, there's other academic degrees you can get in this business. Obviously, a, a business degree, a BS right. business. I got that You've from got that. East Carolina. An MBA. I got that from the University of West Florida when I was in the Navy. Garrett's got that. Garrett's got that from Wake Forest. And then one that I'm really proud of is our RICP designation. I was one of the first 50 advisors in the country to get that. And that is a deep drill down into our expertise, what we do, which is retirement planning. And when you came aboard, I said, I want you to get that RICP. And I think it was worth your while, wasn't it? it well, I learned a lot. I'd already been doing this for a number of years, but uh, I had learned, I thought it was good. Well, since I've already been doing this, there's not going to be a lot of new stuff to learn. Oh, boy, was I wrong on that. Yeah, <laughs> there was. The Retirement Income Certified Professional was, uh, for me, about a year and a half. And, uh, yeah, learned an absolute enormous amount through that. Well, you know, before time gets away, let's uh, give uh, our listeners one more chance to sign up for our Taxes and Retirement Workshop this Tuesday night, the 22nd, 6.30 p.m. out in Clemens in the Broyhill. Call us at 336-391-3409, or you can go on our website at thewealthguardians.com, hit up that event tab, and sign up right there. You know, Bryce, there's a whole list of other designations out there that we could get into. and We just don't have the time for it. We can list the other ones that we have while we're sitting here for yeah. a second. So we also have our uh, NSSA, National Social Security Association, yep. credentials, and then our uh, CLTC, CLTC, Certified, certified Long-Term long -term Care. care. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, is that it? Is that all we have? That's that's all that uh, that I've got. The oldest one out there, I'll mention that, is the CLU. I haven't even heard of that Chartered one. Life Underwriter. Oh, okay. It's specifically about life insurance. Uh, it was started back in the 20s through the American College up in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania. Very good. Well, yeah. we could keep going on and on about these, but those are the key ones. Those are the ones you'd really want to look out for, uh, particularly the RICP. If you're getting uh, ready to retire and you want to make sure you're making the best decisions for your retirement, you'd want to call somebody with that designation and certainly one who's a fiduciary. We didn't even go into that. But uh, Doug, thank you for joining us. Uh, 
if you're out there and any of this made sense to you and you want to sit down with us, 336-391-3409, we'd love the opportunity to sit down with you. This is Bryce Payne. With me is Doug Ray. The show is The Wealth Guardians, helping you retire the job and keep the paycheck. And this is 96.7 FM WTOB.